I'm reading directly here from the Daily Telegraph, which uh, incidentally is a conservative newspaper. In fact, it's probably the most Tory of mainstream newspapers, of quality newspapers, I should say, non-tabloid newspapers. Widow killed herself after benefits curbed. A partially sighted woman suffering back pain killed herself after her disability payments were curbed following a two-minute government health assessment. Jacqueline Harris, 53, a former nurse, walked with sticks after she suffered slip discs in her back and neck and could not use one wrist properly. But the arthritic widow from Bristol was told she was not fit for work. Ms Harris received incapacity benefit but was asked to attend an assessment last year in order to claim its replacement, Employment and Support Alliance. In January, her benefits were stopped. A Department for Work and Pensions Tribunal was due to consider her appeal, but she was found dead on November the 2nd. An inquest has been opened and adjourned. Okay. Sadly, this was not the first and will not be the last um, such suicide resulting from these uh, work capability assessments, these vile work capability assessments. And it's... um, it's unfortunate to say that the suicides probably go well into the hundreds, maybe even the thousands. This is a direct result of Tory government policy concerning unemployment and uh, capability to work. People who are genuinely suffering from health ailments are being hounded, humiliated and bullied by these capability assessments. I don't ma- intend to make this video very long because um, I think that report says it all but it's not the first and it won't be the last and no matter what achievements David Cameron may have as Prime Minister abroad this will always, always, always cloud his legacy as far as I'm concerned this um, absolutely shameful approach that his government has taken to dealing with um, unemployment and particularly um, people who are um, entitled to benefits the sort of um, and to make matters worse not only are they hounding people to suicide and they have bl- the blood of those people on their hands there's no question about it um, they are directly contributing to the hate crimes that are being leveled against disabled Britons at this time they're directly contributing to it because they encourage their ignorant supporters to believe that all disabled Britons are lazy and work shy, which is a term I hate. But this one was a former nurse, someone who's helped people in her life, someone who's contributed to society. Only 53. She's taken her own life. And you know, whenever these cases are highlighted, they come out with crocodile tears, like uh, they regret that any time this happened. But they deny that their policies have anything to do with it. And this is a cardly denial, because it's very obvious that their policies are directly connected. And I think they know this. It's nothing more to say, really. If I keep talking, I'll just have a rant, so... Yeah... It's shameful. Um, and it's actually not unlike communist systems whereby people were driven to suicide when they were accused of not contributing to society. It's not actually dissimilar. Granted, it's probably a much smaller scale than what happened, for example, in China during the Cultural Revolution. But if that seems like an extreme comparison, I'm not making this up. That report speaks for itself. People are literally driving, being driven to suicide. Literally. This is a life and death situation. These policies are costing lives. There's no other way to gloss it over. And whenever in the future Cameron's premiership is assessed, this must always, always be levelled against him. That his government deliberately drove people to suicide. And it will forever be to their shame. Because they've had abundant chances to reform these policies and they haven't.